Not all pickup trucks are popular. Sometimes, understandably so, as not every manufacturer's pickups were good. But some trucks were good, yet they were overlooked and undersold for most of the time. So here are five underrated pickups that deserved a second chance. The 1968 Ford F100 Ranger is a significant model within the fifth generation of the Ford F-Series, showcasing Ford's dedication to durability and practicality. This year saw the continuation of models like the F100, F250, and F350, alongside special editions designed for specific purposes, including the Camper Special and Explorer Special, among others. These variations offered enhancements like heavy-duty cooling, pre-wiring for campers, and additional hauling capabilities. Ford introduced powerful engines to the F100 line in 1968, including the 360 cubic inch displacement and 390 cubic inch displacement V8, alongside the 302 cubic inch displacement V8. These engines provided a significant boost in horsepower, with options ranging from 210 to 230 horsepower, depending on the carburetor configuration. The 1968 Ford F-Series was noted for its twin I-beam independent suspension and flexomatic rear suspension, innovations aimed at enhancing durability and load adaptability. Ford's design ethos for the F-Series during this period emphasized a more angular and boxier appearance, deliberately eschewing the trend towards more streamlined trucks. The Jeep Scrambler CJ8 manufactured from 1981 to 1986, had a longer wheelbase compared to the CJ7. It stood out with its distinctive half-cab design and pickup truck bed. The production of this model took place in Toledo, Ohio, USA, resulting in a total of around 27,500 units being assembled. The Scrambler gained its fame thanks to a popular trim package that showcased eye-catching orange and gold side graphics. The Scrambler had a curb weight that varied from 2,200 to 2,950 pounds, and its gross vehicle weight rating was around 4,150 pounds. All model years and trims come equipped with standard features such as rearview mirrors, gas tank and transfer case skid plates, tilt steering wheel and vinyl bucket seats. Additional features offered were a durable hardtop made of polycarbonate, fog lamps with halogen bulbs for enhanced visibility, efficient power brakes for reliable stopping, and an AM-FM stereo radio for entertainment. The Jeep CJ series featured a variety of impressive packages throughout its production, such as the Tuxedo Park, Renegade, Levi's Package, Golden Eagle, and specialized sports editions like the SR and SL Sport Packages. These packages not only enhanced the overall look of the vehicle, but also improved its functionality. The Scrambler came with a range of engine choices and different transmission types, making it highly adaptable and capable off-road. The model's distinctive design and limited availability have made it highly desirable for collectors and fans of Jeep vehicles. The Jeep Scrambler CJ8 represents a noteworthy milestone in the illustrious legacy of the Jeep brand, seamlessly connecting the world of practical utility vehicles with the contemporary the field of SUVs and pickups. The 1970 Dodge D200 is part of Dodge's second-generation D-Series, which was produced from 1965 to 1971. This lineup included a variety of body styles, such as two-door and four-door pickup trucks. The D200, a three-quarter-ton model, offered a range of engines, including the 361 cubic inch 5.9-liter V8, and a 383 cubic inch 6.3 liter V8, among others. Transmission options included three and four speed manual and three speed dash or column mounted automatics. The wheelbase varied depending on the configuration, with options including 114 inches for the regular cab with a 6.5 foot bed, 128 inches for the regular cab with an 8 foot bed, and others for different cab and bed combinations. Dodge trucks from this era were known for their durability, featuring solid all-welded construction, reinforced door hinges, rubber body mounts, and rust protection. The crew cab option introduced in 1969 allowed for a six-man work crew to travel comfortably, showcasing Dodge's commitment to providing functional and versatile vehicles for a range of needs. 
The Studebaker Champ, produced from 1960 to 1964, was Studebaker's innovative approach to creating a light-duty pickup truck during a period of financial difficulty for the company. Its design utilized components from the Studebaker Lark, a compact car introduced in 1959, which proved to be a successful strategy for the struggling automaker. This design choice made the Champ one of the early pickups to offer car-like comfort, featuring a wide, comfortable bench seat and a handsomely styled interior, a concept that wouldn't become common in pickup trucks until the late 1960s and early 1970s. The Champ introduced several notable features during its production run, including a variety of engine options, such as the traditional 170 cubic inch L-Head 6, delivering 90 brake horsepower, optional 245 cubic inch 6 with 118 brake horsepower, and two V8 options developing 180 and 210 brake horsepower, respectively. It was also the first truck to offer a sliding rear window, and in its final years, air conditioning became an available option, pointing towards modern truck conveniences. Despite these innovations, the Champ faced several challenges, including quality issues with the OHV six-cylinder engine introduced in 1961, which developed cracks in the cylinder head due to improperly adjusted valves. Additionally, the Champ's production was affected by Studebaker's financial woes, leading to the closure of its South Bend, Indiana factory in December 1963 and the end of Champ production. Sales of the Champ were modest, with production peaking at 7,325 units in 1962 and dwindling to only 2,509 units by its final year in 1964. Today, the Champ is highly prized by collectors for its unique combination of passenger car comfort and rugged mechanical durability, despite its tendency to rust in certain areas like the cab floor and front fenders. The Champ's legacy includes its influence on the design of future pickups, introducing features like the sliding rear window and a focus on passenger comfort that would become standard in later models. The first generation of the Ford F-Series, manufactured between 1948 and 1952, represented a notable shift in Ford's strategy towards truck design, prioritizing vehicles tailored for trucking purposes. The F1 was a popular model during this era, known for its durability and practicality. It featured a 6.5-foot bed and a 114-inch wheelbase, with an all-steel floor construction and a hardwood subfloor to protect against dents. During this time, new features were added to enhance the functionality of cars, such as skid strips and reinforced tailgates with anti-rattle chains for a smoother operation. The F-Series had a wide range of models, from the F1 to the F8, to meet different commercial vehicle requirements, with capacities ranging from half-ton to three-ton. The F1 came with two engine options. One was a 226 cubic inch 3.7 liter inline, six that produced 95 horsepower, while the other was a 239 cubic inch 3.9 liter flathead V8 that offered 100 horsepower. In 1952, a new engine option was introduced a 215 cubic inch 3.5 liter six-cylinder engine that packed a punch with 101 horsepower. These trucks were engineered with functionality as a top priority, incorporating parallel leaf springs, double-acting tubular shock absorbers, and an open drive shaft with Hotchkiss drive, departing from the traditional Ford torque tube. The cabin of the F1 was praised for its luxurious feel, providing ample space and comfort, it boasted a wider interior, larger doors, increased headroom, and a taller windshield compared to its predecessors. With the addition of a fresh air heater and a complete set of instruments, the focus was on creating a comfortable environment akin to a cozy living room. In 1950, there was a change made to the three-speed shifter, which was moved to the steering column. The following year, a larger rear window was introduced, improving both driver comfort and visibility. The F-Series owes much of its development and success to the influential leadership of Ford, especially Henry Ford II. Following World War II, Ford set its sights on regaining its foothold in the automotive and truck manufacturing sector. Their initial focus was on trucks, as they could be developed more quickly and offered greater profit margins. 
The F-Series was introduced in 1948, known as the bonus-built trucks, marking a major milestone in Ford's pursuit of success in the truck market. 